Hey, what's up everyone? When it's summertime, man, I'm telling you, it gets tough fishing in the heat. So I am in the woods today fishing a stream using BFS setup. That's right. I upgraded my Corrado BFS reel with the new Roro spool, the lightest spool out there for the Corrado BFS SLX. And uh, yeah, it fits uh, apparently a couple other reels too, which is amazing. But anyway, guys, if you guys want to see the unboxing video and more details about this spool, you guys can check it out on the top right hand corner. But right now, I am trying to figure out where to go because as you can see, it's pretty overgrown now. We've got some poison ivy, ooh, right there, almost touching my bag. But yeah, I am gonna be throwing some light lures. I'm gonna start off with the Euro Tackle B Vibe on a 132nd ounce jig. So this is approximately what, 1.5 gram-ish? So yeah, thin line, Veravis. I got their uh, Veravis 4 PE at 0.6 go. Very thin, okay, very thin stuff. Four pound mono, their absolute CB line. And uh, yeah, let's see what we'll catch. And I am still using the prototype Matsuo rod. It's a five foot six inch rod, pretty short, which is great for this uh, type of fishery. Uh, I do have a longer one at six and a half, but uh, yeah, I'm not gonna spoil it for you guys. You guys have to wait and watch for those videos. But anyway, let's get to the water and uh, let's do some fishing. All right, folks, got to this water area. You can see it's pretty overgrown. I saw some carps, some bass, and a bluegill right in front of me right here. Um, all right, I definitely not gonna count that cast right there. But yeah, I, I don't know anything about this reel right now with the upgraded spool. Oops. First thing I'm gonna do is put it probably like a two and a half breaks just to see how things are. Oh, it's going out very fast. As expected, it is a tiny light spool. So let me just put it back to three and I can walk in the water just a little bit, I guess. Makes things easier. Oh yeah, these creeks right here, sandy bottom, woot woot. All right, let's cast upstream. Wow, that's actually pretty good distance. Oh, got a fish, got a fish, fish, fish. That's pretty much, uh, I guess, oh, dropped it. Uh, second cast, you could say, the first cast was just a test. But that's our first real cast, and I have to say, it, it went pretty far. I was gonna say a little bit more, but the fish bit. But yeah, um, three breaks, this spool right here is pretty, it comes out pretty fast. Oh, there's a nice fish right there. Oh, wow. All right, let me put a drag up a little bit because I, I don't think I'm setting the hook. All right. Yeah, creek fishing with tiny little jigs. I think it could be a, a pretty fun thing to do. I don't have that many. Oh, man, I, I tapped three times right there. All right. Not too bad. Not too bad. As in uh, distance, this is a pretty light jig. I guess I could probably put on a lighter one and see how light it go. Uh, this rod right here is an IM8, so it's pretty stiff. So I can sling it, right? Very super fast. Tip. Okay, oop, 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 oop. here we go. First fish. Not too bad. I mean, this is what I expect to uh, catch using small stuff, but hopefully we'll land a, a biggie. But yeah, so far casting this small little guy, you know, 1.5 grams approximately, it's pretty good. Now I'm gonna sneak up a little bit more. Uh, make sure everything is good. Again, I'm at three breaks. Oh wow, I almost hit that little waterfall area. Got it right by the wall. I thumbed it right on time and there's a fish and it came right off. Man, these mosquitoes are crazy. Some of them not even mosquitoes, they're just like gnats. But yeah, I have to say, accuracy is pretty good. Distance is not bad for something this light. Very impressive. Right by that tree. Oh, got another nip. No. All right, let me walk up slowly and get it by that stump over there to the left. Oh, got another bite. Yeah, I, I, I see like, a, I guess you could say edges. Got him. Small little guy. No wonder it's been like nipping, nipping because I think they're just biting the tail. But I'm glad that EPS swim, very small. They can still get hooked very easily. Off you go. Let's see. 
That's the stump I want to try to get hit. What is that? Oh, got him. Oh yeah, a little bigger guy. Oh, yeah, here we go. This is what I'm talking about. Beautiful guy, beautiful guy. Sweet, sweet. Now, let's do some overhead casting. All right, it goes a little fast because I guess uh, this rod tip right here is not bending to me, so I gotta time it right. Oh, there's a fish right there, very tiny. Don't really care about that. But uh, there we go. Well, that's what happens when you throw high in the sky, you hit trees. That's why having a short rod is probably better. But uh, as you see, I got something right there and I kind of didn't want to do any sort of, you know, crazy cast. But let's let's try to backhand cast. Uh, nope, got into the tree. My backhand cast with this rod right here and this setup is not good yet. So I'll fail both that one. All right, how about some side cast into this deep hole here. Oh, <laughs> all right, what, what if I do like, can I do flip cast? Not good. Jimbo's not good at it. Not at all. Oh, got one. Hey, not a blue gill. Off you go. Ay, oh, there's some thorns here. Ugh, overgrowth. A thin pants, no good. Hmm, I wonder if I just jig down this area. There's a fish for sure. Look at that, baby fish. Whoop. Too many baby fish. Oh! Jig it up. Vertical jigging. I knew there's gonna be one or two here. Spinning, spinning. Dude, dude, all right. Little bass, creek bass, let's go. This looks good. These don't look good though. You know, you see the film that's on top of the water? I wonder if it's like poison ivy oil or anything like that. Would it suck? Like I got home, right? And I got so much poison ivy on my hand, it's insane. That, that would suck, probably the worst. Oh look, I just put them on a poison ivy and now I gotta deal with it. Oh my gosh, she just splashed water in my face. I got poison ivy in my face now. Oh no. All right, let me throw them back in. I gotta wipe my face. All right, next lure I wanna throw is a 1 16th ounce jig head plus a smaller swim bait from Big Bites. This is a pretty cool guy. I got it from their, um, the Monster Bass, their multi-species box. And uh, yeah, this thing looks uh, pretty good. It's uh, two inches long, kind of like the B-Vibe, but I think it looks a little thicker. So it's gonna be a little heavier. So this thing might be closer to three grams total. Don't know, but it does feel definitely a little heavier. And yeah, given that uh, we are fishing a little deeper here, we might be able to entice some big fish. I don't know, but uh, first thing first, I'm gonna move away from these poison ivy because I, I don't want to handle big fish over that. Let's go somewhere else. Oh, 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 made it to the open. This is probably where everyone fishes because I see a lot of fishing line, a lot of trash usually. So um, wish me luck guys, wish me luck. Now, this lure, is it swimming? Oh yeah, the tail is paddling. It's wobbling. All right, so um, let's play around for a second. Fix the line for a second. I have to say the lure is coming out pretty darn fast. Like fast, super fast. I'm gonna get a little bit more line and see what's going on. Like some casting room right here. All right, ready? Let's bomb this. Accuracy is there, distance is not too bad for you know, one six, well, not one sixteenth, you know what I'm saying? But uh, I would say this is pretty good. Now, can the stock spool already do this? You damn right the stock spool could already do this. This is a pretty, pretty heavy lure here. Not too bad though. A longer rod definitely would probably be great. But right now this, this is pretty good. Oh, 
I think I'm gonna stay focused and throw a light lower. So I might have to uh, put that one dirty second ounce back on and you know, fish that instead. Cause the water here is pretty shallow. I just wanna put this big guy on just in case uh, you know, I'll catch a big fish or something like that. Bigger hooks, bigger bait. Uh, but I think I might have to go back finesse. Finesse is the best they say, right? So what happened if I put this thing breaks down to like mm, two and a half? Can I get further? Uh, distance is not that much further. But it's pretty cool that I'm able to go that low. Like this spool is light. I'm afraid to go even lighter. Note that I do have all the brakes on, as in the magnets on the side. You know, I didn't take any out. Just the stock ones. And note, we cannot upgrade the magnets on the side because this spool right here is pretty much tight to the side plate. So unlike, you know, some of the CDM reels where people are slapping on extra magnets for, let's say the, the Dark Wolf Ultra and stuff like that, that were killed on Black Knight 1, 2, right? You can't do that with this. And I tried. I, I did uh, just test it out on my unboxing video of the spool, just, just to test it out, right? It, it just doesn't work. So don't try it, saving you guys some time. All right, guys, I am gonna throw a different one right now. Still EPS swim, the one inch swim bait, but I am using a different jig head. This is a 1 64th ounce jig from Trout Magnet. It's a darting style uh, jig. So let's see how this goes. Oh, it goes to the left just a little bit. E, my cast is all wrong. All right, so um, yeah, can this do one gram? Well, Jimbo have to probably change up his casting style. And by the way, this is a new rod. I am not too familiar with it. It's still a little stiff, you know? Potentially, I may have to get a, a oh, oh, you bass. The bass tried to hit it. He's still right there. Oh, got him. Okay, okay. I'll take you. See, going light on these shallow screen, uh, streams is the way to go. Like I was throwing that 1 16th ounce and um, yeah, I cast it for five minutes. I was like, dude, gotta have at least five fish by now. And uh, this lighter lure right here, got him. All right, folks, I put the brakes down to two and let's cast super soft. It's still going a little left a little bit. I think um, my timing is off. Now, oh, 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 get. Anyways, um, yeah, I saw a smaller fish chasing, but the trout magnet, you know, small little bait. Not sure if this, uh, this could really do it. The one gram, a little tough. Got him. There's gotta be a little bit more than a gram because I think the trout magnet might be bigger than EPS swim, but uh, you know, let's just say one, 1 1.1 grams right here, okay? And um, eh, I might have too much line, I'll be quite honest. You know, I have a, a good amount of line for my other reel and uh, I didn't want to waste it, so I just pulled, I put it all on. I think I have approximately 100 feet of braided line, which, you know, you're fishing these streams like this, you don't need that much. But this is thin line, so I don't think it's gonna add that much weight onto my spool. Now, 0.6 goal is not the thinnest line out there. Okay, it's not. There are thinner ones uh, from Veravis too. I have one, it's like the Trout Master. And the Trout Master, I think the one I had was like 0.2 goal. So that's thin, super thin. Oh, look at that. Maybe I'm over spooling because I got a little wind knot right here. Yes, yes. Can I fix this? I got this little line twist like thing right here. Yeah, a little knot. There we go. All right. I think that could have been uh, causing some issues going through the guides. All right, one more time. All right, so one gram, let's go. This is uh, not too bad. Distance wise, not far, but it's anticipated. Once again, accuracy, right? Right in front of me. All right, I'm gonna aim for that tree. I don't know if I could get the distance, but um, I'm a little off, I'm a little off. What's going on? All right, one more time, one more time. Got it, look at that. Let it fall down slow. Could be one or two fish right there. Boom, hey! Almost hit me in my, uh, right in my head. I had a duck for that one. But yeah, I think, 
I'm getting a hang of this setup. It's not too bad. But I don't. I still don't think this might be the right reel to throw that super light lure. Like, see this? A little bit over two breaks, and um, yeah. I'll definitely want to try this again if you guys are interested. I'll try it with a different rod. But right now, I'm gonna take this trout magnet uh, jig off, put back the 132nd ounce, and uh, keep fishing. What do you guys say? Let me know in the comments below if you guys want to see me fish a trout magnet with this spool on a different rod. Ah, got one. Little guy. Ah, this is what I'm talking about. Fighting dinks in a dink pond. Off it goes. Oh, it just landed. All right, got a little dinky bluegill. Look at the small, small guy. I hooked him pretty much outside. <laughs> Technically a foul hook. Look at that, green sunfish. Look at that. Hey, hey, chill out, chill out. For those people who keep saying this is a warm mouth, it's not a warm mouth. You can tell because there's no teeth on the tongue. It's smooth. All right, green sunfish. I don't think I've caught a warm mouth in this lake ever, so. Oh, here it goes. What? What? What do I have here? This thing's going. Is that a snakehead? It looks long. Oh my gosh. My line is going. It's just going. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna get spooled. Oh no! Oh my gosh. It was so long. Oh man, he got right in the dirt, now it's gone. But yeah, it looks like it could have been a, a long, some sort of elongated fish, and I think it might have been a snakehead. Oh my gosh. Got him. I think I found a trout. That looks like a trout. That is a trout. Holy smokes. Hold up. A trout. You still hear trout? Oh my gosh. Huh. What? Yo, I landed in a trout. Man, catching that one trout on that crazy swampy-like pond, crazy. I didn't expect to have a trout at that pond because it's pretty mucky right there and it's pretty hot. It's very hot lately. Uh, but, uh, dang, didn't uh, have enough power in that battery. You know, lately I've been taking one battery out because the baby's been napping uh, not too long, okay? And uh, fortunately, this trip here, he napped very long and um, I used a battery from another trip that uh, I only went out for maybe like 15 minutes and uh, had to go back because baby woke up. Well, actually he didn't wake up, he didn't sleep uh, on that one episode and uh, yeah, bummer. Next time Jimbo will bring out fully charged batteries, okay guys? But anyway, enough about Jimbo's misfortunes, right? Let's talk about this spool. First and foremost, it's super impressive, okay? Super duper impressive. Don't need extra magnets, right? And uh, you could throw lures down to approximately one gram. Now, I didn't throw the trout magnet, trout magnet, right? Um, I feel like uh, if I were to spool less line on, because I have about 100 feet there, I think I could accurately launch a trout magnet if I pair it up with a correct rod. Now, just a reminder that I was using this prototype rod is an IM8 and it's very, very stiff. So, you know, it doesn't really use that much uh, 
power from the rod to sling this lure out, especially for a light lure. You know, when you have a very light lure, it can't really use um, the, the the reflex of the rod to actually shoot it out, right? If, you, if I had a heavier lure, sure, it could bend the, the rod back a little further when you swing it back, but nope, not, not for that. So maybe if I use one of my trout rods, trout BFS rods, I'll probably be able to sling some trout magnets pretty good, pretty darn good. And um, yeah, I am so impressed with this rural spool. Let's talk about the braking for a second. No need the extra magnets on it, but I felt like uh, I felt like the spool coming out very, very quick. It needs to be a little bit more controlled. So I'll probably play around with it a little bit more. I'll probably play with the brakes a little bit higher. I uh, definitely want to take this out again on ultralight side. So I may just deplete some line first, okay? And um, yeah, I put out maybe on my Surinoya Aries rod. I, I love that rod. Or maybe some other rod, you know? I have a lot of rods to play with it, by the way. But uh, yeah, I really, really recommend this spool for those who do have the Corrado BFS Rio or the SLX because that spool of stock spool right there is pretty heavy. Although it's a great, great stock, uh, you know, spool for, let's say, bass BFS fishing. If you have this reel and, you know, you guys just want to have, you know, uh, extra spare spool that's lighter and you can throw lighter lures. This is a good option for you guys. With that said, you guys can get this spool at Bait Finesse Empires if you guys are in the US or if you guys are, you know, globally, right? You guys get it from RoboLore.com because uh, they're from Hong Kong and they do ship uh, pretty much every country in the world. You guys gotta double check that. Uh, can't, don't take my word for it. Check it out for yourself. All the information are left in the description below. Anyway, guys, I thank you guys for watching. It's hot out there. Stay hydrated, stay cool, and fish on because the fish don't wait. They'll bite no matter when. It might be tough, but you guys don't got, you guys get none. So get out there.